So I'm going to go ahead and switch over from my template PHP app project to just one called PHP app, which is an empty directory. And I'll do the same here, where I have an empty directory in our project here. This is the same directory, the PHP app directory, in my code editor here. So what are our goals here? We run around our development environment in Docker. This means running Nginx and PHP, and a MySQL container, and a Redis container. And those are the only ones I'm going to do in this video series. There's more, depending on your use case, of course, but those are the basics. And for that, in our case here, we're going to build a Docker file to build an Nginx and PHP image to run our code in. And we're going to build an image for Nginx and PHP to make sure we have exactly what we need for our application, including what version of PHP we have and all the modules installed and making sure Nginx is set up in a way to speak to it correctly. And for MySQL and Redis, we don't really need to build our own images for that because we're not customizing them too much or really at all. All we need to do for those are to grab images that already exist that other people have created. We'll grab the official images, in fact, so that we can just suck those in and use them without really any modification. So we're going to be in step two here for a little while where we build an Nginx and PHP image in Docker so we can use that to hack in our applications locally here. So what we're going to start doing here is actually make a new directory. I'm just going to call it Docker because I'm going to put most of our Docker related stuff inside of here. And what I like to do is make another directory for each service, in other words, each container that we have here. So I have three. I'm going to put Nginx and PHP inside of one container and I'm going to call that app. And then if we were going to make our own MySQL and Redis containers, I would also have a MySQL and Redis uh, directory in here, but we won't. I'm just making an app container in this case. Now to build a Docker image, we need a Docker file. And a Docker file is a file that tells Docker what commands to run inside of a container to build an image for us. And the basics of a Docker file are that we start from an existing image and then we build off of it. So I'm going to start from Ubuntu and I'm going to start from Ubuntu 18.04, which is the latest long-term uh, release of Ubuntu. I need to spell it right. And that is actually going to get grabbed automatically by Docker from Docker Hub from the official Ubuntu repository, and we're going to grab the tag 18.04 because images have tags. So the image itself is Ubuntu, and the tag we're grabbing from is 18.04 to get that version of Ubuntu. So we're doing that, we're using that as the starting place of our own image. And then we're going to do a bunch of commands in here, and every time we do a command, it's going to build on that base image and create a new image for us. And we can sort of see that in process here. So I'm going to do docker run. I'm going to remove this when I stop running it to it to make it interactive. So these are actually a dash i and a dash t flag. These used in combination with each other allow me to interact with the container just as if I'm logged into it over SSH, except it's not SSH. We're going to run an instance of Ubuntu 18.04, which is going to be our base image. And I'm going to run bash inside of it. So it's going to look like we're logged into the container. And in fact, we sort of will be, but it's not SSH. So I don't have any images on my computer yet, right? Remember in the last video, I deleted them all. So this is going to try to grab it from Docker Hub. And if it finds it, then it's going to download that image. And that's exactly what it's doing right now. Okay, now it started that container and I'm inside of it. And I'm user root inside of that container that's created. And that's it. We can just do whatever we want in here. So when we start running commands inside of a Docker file, this is the process that it's doing. I can do app get update. And I'll do apt-get install dash y nginx. So I'm just going to do this one update, this one change to the container. I'm installing nginx. And now inside of this container, I have nginx. nginx is there. So I'm going to do it in a new tab. I'll do docker ps. We have this container here. And I can do docker diff and the container ID here. And what we see here are a bunch of changes. So what it's doing here is taking the diff, the difference between the base image that this container was built off of and all the changes I just made into it, the changes that have been made since then and the 41 seconds that it's been running. In our case, we ran apt-get update and then we installed nginx and then nginx then installed its own dependencies. And we see these are all the differences. We have changed files, added files. There'll be maybe some deleted files, but probably not. Mostly just changed and added in our case. And these are all the things that were added into the container. All the base packages that needed to get installed to support Nginx and then Nginx itself. So what I can do here is actually commit this change. So I can do docker commit and I'll do the help flag here to tell me the flags. Docker commit. And I want to do the author is me, Chris Fidow. And then the message, just like a... Uh, commit message, installed nginx, and then we have the container. So the container we just uh, changed here, I'm going to scroll up to find that container ID. 
copy and paste the container ID, head back down. So we're gonna commit the changes made to that container and repository tag. So I need to change it and give it a new image name. So I can just call this my nginx and call it the latest tag, which is also the default tag. So if I said no tag at all, it will just be latest. But I'll give it latest and it can be anything I want. It could be version 1.0 or something. It's totally arbitrary. Oops, and I have Docker commit here twice. That's my error. Okay. Perfect, so what we have, we have Docker PS. All right, so our container is actually still up and running. Great, whatever. But if I do Docker image LS, I have a new image. So Ubuntu got downloaded when I did that Docker run command because the run command was based off of Ubuntu 18.04. So it got the image so it could run it. And I got that from Docker Hub. Then I ran a container based off that image and I made a change and I committed that change. And that commit created a new image with the changes here. So this image is actually based off of 18.04 and then I installed Nginx and then I committed that change and that created a new image. And I actually could do another Docker run command here. And instead of running off of that base image, I can just run my Nginx latest and I'll run bash because bash will still be inside of it. And we'll see Nginx is there and existing because that is the change that I committed. I installed Nginx. And that is the process of what happens inside of a Docker file. For every change here, for every line I add, it's gonna create a new container, add a change, make a change, commit that change, and make a new image based off of it. And at the end, we get a final image that we can use. And any intermediary container or image that was created there gets destroyed automatically, it gets cleaned out. We just get the last image of our completed work here as a result.